Hello and welcome back to another Shadowlands gold farming video. Today I wanted to do an old gold, old content gold farm and I did, did this one on stream yesterday. So today we are talking about the results from the stream and we're talking about the gold farm itself, why it's so good, why it's valuable and why you should definitely consider doing it. So this is a transmog farm and before we talk about the farm itself, I want to shout out students from CEDO to Gold Cap Guide. This is a really good guide for gold making and gold farming in general. Covers a lot of things you want to know for gold farming and gold making. Basically teaching you how to go from nothing to gold cap. It covers old content, transmog farming, old material farming, Shadowlands content and a lot more stuff. It's basically 100 pages of gold making content. And by utilizing my code or by using my code, you save yourself 50%. So you get it for under $10, basically 9.99, and you get so much gold making information for that price as well. So if you want to check it out, the link will be down below in a pinned comment and the top of the description. So click the link and use my code to save 50%. I actually found out about this farm from a student as well, so it's a really relevant sponsorship for this video, I would say. So click the link down below and use my code to save 50%. So now let's talk about the farm. First of all, this is a transmog farm. Transmog in general will give you a ton of value, but will take some time to sell. So don't expect to get rich overnight. That being said, you will get lots of value for a very short time of farming. And you're looking at my Looter Pacer challenge right now saying 423,000 gold. And everyone in the challenge made over 100,000 gold during these hours. The average seems to be around 200k, a bit more than 200k with my price in there as well. So you're making tons of gold from this place, but some of it might be fake value. But a lot of the transmogs will be like accurate value as well. For example, the Crawl Blade will show for 30,000 gold over there, but actually sells for 100,000 gold plus on our server. So it's going to sell for a lot more than it says, but some of it might sell for less. And the glorious leg plates sell for about that price, but on my server they go for 70,000, so that's a bit fake value. And some of the green items you actually just vendor as well. Basically, whenever you're farming for transmog items, there's a couple of things you want to look for. You want to look for the price and the sell rate, and whether or not the item actually sells for that price. So with that being said, let's talk about the location itself. The location is uh, in Silithus, right here. And before you go here, you want to talk to Sidormi in northeast, all the way in northeast in Silithus, to go back from the BFA version. Basically, you can't farm in the BFA version. You have to be in the vanilla or classic version of Silithus. So talk to Sidormi to turn back time. She is located all the way northeast at the top of the corner, top right corner of the map. You can talk to her, turn back time, and then you can farm here. You ideally want to be level 60, so you can one-shot them. But for example, in my group, we had several people in the level 45 to 49 bracket. And you can see that I don't one-shot them at all. I barely do any damage. I don't know how it works or why it works because they're level 30. And I should one-shot them, but I don't. So we have a level 60 monk in the middle. So we're pulling the mobs to the statue. And he's just killing them and we are looting them. It is. It works very well though. We made tons of gold. I think 5 druids at level 60 will be a little bit more efficient. But this definitely works. And if you are not level 50, or well level 60 I mean, if you don't have 5 level 60s, you can easily grab one monk in the middle and pull the mobs to the monk and let the monk do the job. Now this is only one of several transmog gold farms you should be doing if you are going to go and farm and sell transmog items. As basically for transmog you want to have many different items on the auction house at the same time. I want to say over 1000 items that you are selling at any time. I'm planning on making a complete guide or like at least a beginner's guide for transmog farming very soon, but for this video we are only focusing on this farm right here, why it's good and why I'm doing it. So basically it has a lot of high value items that you can farm for, and many of them sell very fast, like the Glorious Lake Plates has a sell rate of 0.08. That might not tell you much, but basically it sells about 1 every 11 or 12 days. That's fairly fast for a transmog item, so if you just keep those up all the time, many of them will sell. And many of the transmog items from this farm have a sell rate of above 0.02. Many of them are actually above 0.04 as well. 
and you have multiple big ticket items. You have the Crawl Blade, the epic item. That you can see over here, you have the Vanguard Leg Plate, or the Vanguard set itself. You have the Glorious set. You also have the Bloodlust set or something, like the Blood set, basically, that we also have from this one. So, there's tons of different items you can get from this farm, and many of them are very high value. It's called Bloodlust, there we go, the Bloodlust set. You can see the Bloodlust boot, for example. They sell for 25,000 gold, Dalane got some of those during this farm. So some of the items have a lot of value and a very, very good sell rate. So for Transmog, this farm is very good, and it's a very good farm to start out with if you want to do some Transmog farming. And it's maybe one of the better group farms out there for Transmog, so yeah. And just based on the value, so you can definitely see it's worth your time. Even, let's say, half the values are fake values. I still made over 200,000 gold in actual value from this farm, from one hour of farming. So it's definitely worth it, but again, it can take some time to sell. So it's a fun farm to do every now and then, fun farm to do. To stock up on some transmog items that you can sell over time. And let's just talk about the items that I actually got from the farm. So from the farm itself, this is basically everything that I got, like the upper half of my bank, everything down from there is from Cataclysm, but all the way up from here is basically from this farm, so you can see many of the items have a sell rate of 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and basically that means they will sell once every one month or something, so keep them up on the auction house, and you will sell them over time, this is only my start. Basically, I've set myself a challenge to only farm transmog and old material content, or old content material, to see how much gold you can make on a brand new realm only by farming old content, and see how fast you can become like a multi-millionaire in terms of gold on a brand new realm only by farming old content. This is only the start, and so far this is what my bags look like, and many of the items are in the zero or like 2k, the 10k rate, and they have a sell rate of 0.01 all the way up to 0.04 or 0.09 as well actually on this one right here, the Bloodlust once again, and you also have many high ticket items like the Glorious Leg Plates that I got two of, and they have a region market value average of 100k, and on my server they sell for 61 and 65k, and they have a sell rate of 0.04 to 0.08. You also have this one with the same sell rate, and a huge price, 91k actually on my server. You have the Bloodlust as well with a much higher sell rate actually, and a much lower price, but I have three of those. And we have multiple other items with a fairly high sell rate, including this one right here for example, the Jade Breastplate as well. So all of this is from the Silithus farm, and it's only two hours of farming, so there's multiple high ticket items between 10k and 100k, and there's a ton of items in the 2k to 10k range. So when it comes to Transmog, I only keep items, well I try to, only keep items above 0.02. I'm hovering over this one because it has a 0.01, but I chose to keep it anyway, but most of them will have a 0.02 and above so sell rate, and they will have a price of above 2k usually. So I try to only keep Transmog that sells for over 2000 gold, and has a sell rate of 0.02, but I keep some 0.01s as well. So that is it for my transmog farming and for this farm in general. I will have a bigger uh, guide to transmog farming coming out very soon, where I'm talking about which dungeons you should do, how you should start, which items you should focus on and transmogs and such. But basically I want to leave you with one last advice for this video, and that is to think about your realm before you start farming transmog. So basically when you go into farm transmog, there are a couple of different realms you might want to look out for. But in my experience, role-playing realms are really good for transmog farming. So you have realms like the Venture Co, you have realms like Sporegar, Scarshield Legion, Ravenholt, and many more realms as well for role-playing that you can go to. You have Argent Dawn, for example, it's a huge one for actual farming. You have the Fires Brotherhood, Earth and Ring, and so on. There's many different role-playing realms, and RP realms are huge for transmog. So you might want to check those out and make sure they have a high or medium population as well. And just check them out and make sure there's not too many gold farmers or gold makers playing on those realms. So for example, if you know that I play somewhere or someone else plays somewhere, if you know gold makers are playing there, you might not want to go there or you might want to play on the opposite faction of them. 
Because in the end, it's all about who can undercut each other fastest. So just choose a realm that you believe in, that you think there's a uh, the demand for, and you don't think it's oversupplying. So basically, think about supply versus demand, and make sure there's a demand without too much supply. And that is how you find the realms. So role-playing realms are great, and you also have realms like Ravencrest and Stormscale that aren't role-playing, but the, the, they actually still... Transmog still sells fast on those realms as well. So Stormscale, Ravencrest, Outland, Draenor, all of those big realms, they will also sell very fast with Transmog. So make sure there's a supply, or like, uh, make sure there's not too much supply, but make sure there's a demand. And that is basically the end of the video, guys. Leave a like down below, leave a comment as well. I'll be making a full guide on transmog farming very soon, as I think there's a lot of value in transmog farming. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.